In designing a function, you're going to notice that this set of notes for this is pretty agnostic, meaning I talk about Scheme, but I also talk about Java and C++. I'm trying to have you think of this as a whole because of all the different languages that you learn in your educational career. There's going to be three or at least three or four of them. And all of them have their good things and all of them have their bad things. And you'll learn about some of them in this class. You know, Python is a programming language that I teach quite often. It's not my favorite, but I have to admit it's got some nice features about it. So when I'm designing a project, it really makes a difference on exactly what language that I'm being told to use. So these and all the rest of the videos that we're going over here, you have to keep thinking about not Scheme in itself, because yes, I know we're working with Scheme, but we have to think about the languages that we're being offered, like C++, like Java. So you're going to see that throughout a lot of the playlist for this particular topic. But you know what a function is, so I'm not going to go over that part. But you're going to have a domain and a range. Your domain is going to be the arguments that you pass into the function, which can again be ranging. And then <laughs> your range is going to be the return value. Now, Scheme itself is not really meant to return a void, because you remember doing voids in your C++ or Java, especially in the early days. But Scheme's not built for that, but it still can. But even that alone, it, it's, it's, that's the difference between a functional programming language and an imperative or OP or something like that, is what type of returns are you looking for in a function? And most of the time with Scheme, it's, going, it's supposed to be, notice I'm saying it's supposed to be, some type of value that's going to be returned from a function, a very simple one. You know, we also have to worry about, as a programmer, how am I passing in values? You know, in the examples that we have right here, we're passing either by reference or by value. You know, do I have an option? Um, can I cheat and use cons to pass by reference? And there's these, all of these things that you have to think about when you're picking the language that you're using. So Java and C++ handle that very, very differently, especially when it comes to memory, which, man, we'll get to later on. But you might have already had some previous experience in. But we have to think about the overall design of a function for the particular language that you're using. What can we get away with? In Python, for example, I can return, going back to the, the domain and range, or usually not one-to-one -one relationship, you know, in Python, I can return more than one value. In C++, I can actually kind of get away with that with giving it direct access using pointers. If those pointers change because I had direct access in them, A and B, whatever the value originally was, now is going to be returned and changed. Whereas Java, I can't get away with that. You know, I can have a return of value somewhere in the function. Both these happen to be statics, uh, and they both return an in, actually. You know, so we have some, but notice it's just one value that Java is really able to return in this format. So we have to think about overall our design of a function depending on the language. And these are the questions that you need to ask so that you can design it appropriately.